anything that would put uh, you know any, anybody in jeopardy. And uh, you know, Joe Morrison is, uh, is, is, is has the same kind of attitude. I think he uh, he respects the, the power of the car and the unpredictability of a short wheelbase car. So you're you're always uh, waiting, uh, uh, cognizant of the, you know, that it might get out of control, and that kind of <coughs> overtakes the, the nervousness. I'll put it probably before you get in it, you've got a little bit of uh, certainly uh, anxiety. But he says that they don't probably uh, you know, tell them the whole truth. But uh, once uh, once the thing's fired up, uh, yeah, that, that all goes away because you're too too focused on what your uh, what your uh, chore is. Put it that way. So, what's the quickest uh, pa- pass he, he, that the coop's done? Well, Joe ran a 730, uh, 194 uh, at Bakerstown uh, last year, and uh, uh, last last October. And it's actually, it's capable of going a lot quicker than that, but we just uh, haven't let it out. And, uh, and we had some, uh, uh, the first time in, in a good while that we really got the uh, car to track the way we wanted. We had made some changes and everything, and, uh, and Joe just keeps better at sensing what the car is doing on the track and everything, so it's, it's got a whole lot left on it. It nosed over on them uh, before the lights, and uh, you know, Joe doesn't torture the equipment. I think we've got a whole lot more engine left uh, as far as our tune-up goes. We, you know, we, we we're conservative on the nitro methane percentage, conservative on the, uh, on the blower boost, and conservative on the uh, um, Magneto spark lead on it, and uh, it, it all comes down to, to, to the clutch management and getting the car to move. Uh, so you know, we're we're probably going to uh, try and make it go a little bit quicker this year. Uh, a couple of years ago, we, had, we were on a really good pass when the car got loose at Bakersfield, and we probably would have been in the sixes on that one because we had dialed it up a little bit. But uh, we haven't had the reason to do it, uh, but at Bakersfield this year we did, so we let it out a little bit more at Bakersfield than what we what we have been doing in the uh, in the past, so uh, yeah, I think it, it'll 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 go into sixes at two hundred though, and it uh, tracked very really straight out of Bakersfield as the past time, so we uh, got some things uh, sorted out there. One of the problems you have with these cars, you don't run them often enough. We were running it, uh, you know, uh, three or four times a, a month and, and putting 10, 15 passes on it. You can learn a lot quicker, but when you're only running once or twice a month for Few times a shot, it takes the learning curve is uh, stretched out, unfortunately, a little bit. So that's one of the reasons why we try and run it conservatively, with uh, you know, from the uh, clutch to the engine horsepower, to try and get it to go- negotiate the track, put it that way. And frankly, um, uh, you, you know, uh, you talked with uh, Rex Stevens last week, and Rex Rex knows the deal. The people uh, that could come out to see these cars, it's about the about the program that you're running in the uh, show that you put on so you know we we do terrific burnouts joe's really got that down pat now he can smoke the tires from here to eternity if he wants and launch the car and that's really what people are interested in is the uh the show and then add on the top of that you know the uh the little uh roadster that we tow the car to the line with and pull it back with it's all part of the part of the show that we try and uh, put on to entertain everybody and it's fun for us too we're all Above all, we're fans. You know, our whole crew are, are, are hardcore fans too, and that's you know, we, we try and keep that in perspective. And uh, you know, everybody that comes by the car, we uh, treat them just like they're our family. Um, and you know, every one of the guys that uh, we work with, they're like that. So now, in 2018, how, how many events did you do at the coop? Well, we got rained out five times last year, unfortunately. So we ran like four or five uh, events last year, and we got rained out, uh, uh, you know, at, at some of them. So, um, you know, hopefully this year the uh, the weather hold up a little bit better. We're starting to put schedules together this year, and uh, you know, that's I know we're going to do uh, something with Rex Stevens and what in Wisconsin again, and we'll do some stuff in Keystone and Cecil County, and. Uh, you know, HRI's got a standing uh, invitation list to run at any of their national events. Uh, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll decide if we want to do that with a kind of do promotional stuff with a stout to move it for, uh, as we did at Maple Grove uh, year before last week and did it this year. But we, you know, they want us to come to Indy too, but that was uh, tie up a whole weekend and uh, didn't care to do that. But Maple Grove was kind of a nice, good, nice little venue because it was close by. And we could do Norwalk or something like that, but we're, we're just all trying to put the schedule together now. But uh, cars uh, apart, but 
but it'll be back together in another few months and uh, ready to go. So do you have any events uh, confirmed yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the uh, yeah, the deal with Rex uh, is all set up, and the one down in Cecil County is a, another stout thing down there. So we got those, and then we'll do the uh, uh, Keystone uh, nostalgia deal um, out of New Alexandria as well. So, uh, And we'll pick other things up as we as we go through the next uh, you know, two months or so and get in communication with people. That's just all we got to do on that. We'll probably do a, uh, another thing at Dragway 42 in uh, West Salem, Ohio. We've done that the last two years, so they'll probably have us back again to do uh, another uh, another uh, event there. Now, what is the date on the Wisconsin International Raceway? June uh, what? Mm, well, you know, uh, Rex had sent me that, but it's like the first or second weekend in June, I think. That was a shame because last year we got rained out going there kind of a funny story because uh, uh, Joe Morrison's daughter was graduating from high school and he was going to try and get out of the graduation and I said, ah, you're not going to get out of that, Joe. And uh, another local racer, uh, Dave Norris, who uh, has a terrific pro mod car, he got a uh, uh, 570, 250 plus mile an hour pro mod car. David wanted to drive this coupe from when he first saw it some years ago, so uh, he, we took him out to Keystone, uh, Alexandria, and he tested the car out there and did, did fine. So he was going to uh, drive the car up in uh, uh, Wisconsin while Joe was watching uh, watching his daughter graduate. But we we got the call when we got Indianapolis uh, from the owner of the track up there, and he said, "Hey, uh, the show's off. They got poured on rain, and there was mud all over the track, so that was the end of that." But uh, uh, hopefully, that will go through this year. And I think uh, the match with Rex will be really kind of fun because they're two different cars. Uh, He's got a uh, long dragster with a coupe body on it, competition coupe body and a late model blow fuel Hemi, and we've got a short wheelbase, uh, you know, old nostalgia hot rod. And uh, it'll be a different kind of show for us because we'll, we'll just pull up the line and smoke the tires, and, uh, we, which is what Rex does. So uh, we'll have to do a little bit of a different uh, setup for the car. We'll uh, put weight in the clutch, put a little more air in the tires, and put a lot of horsepower in the engine, and... Uh, you know, Joe can just pull up the line, leave the car in high gear, and uh, uh, let it rip when the lights come down. It'll be a good, good, good show for the folks, though, because I know uh, Rex's car billows smoke off of it, too. So uh, uh, be quite entertaining, I think. Yeah, Rex, Rex said, do you want give to a sh- give a show like uh, they used to do it back in the 60s? Mm. That's, the, that's the idea. Yeah, it'll be like... Uh, uh, Time warp going back uh, 50 years or so, how the cars used to run back then. So, uh, and they're both, they're not alcohol cars, they're fuel cars. So uh, the show will be, I think, uh, pretty spectacular. So h- how much uh, percentage nitro you run on in that uh, coupe? Um, we started out uh, a few years ago at uh, 70%. But, uh, you know, as, uh, as things things go we keep uh, bumping it up a little bit so we're at 80 percent now and we're just doing it to try and uh not let the car get out of control or get wild on us but um uh you know we think we can we can go another five percent on it without too much trouble and uh it, it's a when you put five percent more fuel in it isn't just a five uh, percent change in horsepower it's, it's kind of an exponential change too so the cars really respond to that and uh so we'll 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 do that, and uh, we've got a big fuel pump on it that we've had, so it'll it'll handle the handle the fuel. We made some other fuel injection changes uh, over the winter time to help it out. Uh, you know, when you when you hit the throttle right off the line, it'll get more fuel into it. And we're going to change the transmission gearing too. We're going to drop it down a little bit to uh, settle the car down uh, once all the power and the clutch come in on it. So uh, all those things will help it. Uh, Track straight. And you gotta keep in mind this. You know, the car is a pretty old car. It's not a tube frame car. It's a uh, square frame rail car. Now it's all reinforced with tube, tube frames and stuff. But we've made it as stiff as we can. But it's still a short wheelbase car. And it's uh, not as aerodynamic as a flying barn. So uh, you know, that's the that's the things that, uh, that we have to have to always try and manage in the passes that we make. Now, how many uh, passes are you and Rex gonna do? Um, I think 
think I think the the schedule was for to do two of them up there. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, we may use it as a test session too, so we may do our two with Rex and uh, uh, come back and set the car up to run hard, and uh, we may do a third one up there then just to. Uh, uh, it's a good chance to test the car up a little bit to see how quick we can get it to go. As I said, our objective this year is to get it to run in the high sixes at 200. It looks like we're, uh, you know, we, we can do that if uh, if we can just keep the car straight. It tracked track really well in the lights before, and it's doing that uh, doing that now. So uh, you know, we're, we're we should be in good shape for that. We made a lot. Of, we when we crashed the car out in California a few years ago, which was pretty spectacular. We had to make a lot of changes. To frame and repair it. Unfortunately, I've got some, uh, Dave Dominic who does the uh, chassis stuff for me is just terrific. And, uh, you know, as I was saying before, my support guys are terrific. Tom Hemphill, who helps, uh, does some machine work with the engine, the engine and stuff. And, uh, uh, whatever, whenever we need stuff repaired, Tom's always there. And, uh, we've got uh, some terrific cylinder heads that Nick Smithberg did for us. Nick was feeling pretty high in the engine master's challenge a couple times with their old cars. And so, Got a lot of good parts in the car, I'll put it that way. And horsepower wise, we're competitive. But, uh, you know, any of the fuel alters, it's just that we've got a car that's probably heavier and uh, certainly uh, less, less slippery, to put it that way. But again, we're, it's, it's about the show, not, uh, not about how fast we can go. Right. Now, now in smoke, with smoke and the tires all the way down the track, do you still get header flames? Um, at nighttime, you will. Um, Probably need a little more percentage than we have to really do that, and and more fuel. So we'll see how it works out this year. Uh, yeah, but at, at nighttime, there's you know there'll be there'll be some flames. But the, the you know when you get the engine really hot and ninety percent or so, that's when you really get the, you get a lot of a lot of uh, light out of the pipes on it. And, um, you know, we uh, it's funny. I, I know I did start the car someplace or other, and uh, one of the guys. Came up and uh, who was the new fuel cars and uh, they, the capital cars are running there, making these big flames. But they, and they they have ways that they can do that. They they turn the timing back and run the car real lean and stuff, and they'll get a lot of flames out and everything. And ours is pretty rich to be safe, so that also keeps the flames down a little bit. But uh, uh, you know, we had little short choppy flames out of there, that, you know, uh, six inches or something like that. And the guy said, "Well, I can tell you got a race car tune up in that car. It's not a capital car." And so, yeah, that's pretty much all we know how to do, you know, so, uh, yeah, but we can, you know, we'll, we'll put on a light show a little bit, you know. Now, do you have sponsors for that coop? Uh, yeah, pretty much me, and uh, put it that way. We do get some help from, uh, on parts from various people, safety stuff, and Bonifon clutches, and uh, uh, folks of that nature, but, uh, you know, really it's just a labor of love, put it that way, Uh you know, the, the stuff that, uh, you know, that I've done for a lot of years and the guys who helped me out with it. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, nobody's throwing money at you on these cars. And, uh, that, that pretty much doesn't happen much anymore, put it that way. You get part breaks, parts breaks on stuff, but that's about it. Hmm. All right. Now, what what goes in the preparation to get the coupe ready for a weekend of drag racing? Oh, my. Well, we system in the car basically you know the uh the bearings get checked the uh, uh you know uh, all the you know when we warm it up all the, the when, when it's cold actually we retort the cylinder heads uh we check all the fuel injection nozzles we check uh you know, all the lines make sure they're all all cleared and everything everything's uh you know, all the wheels are tightened down all the suspension parts are all tightened down all the safety stuff is uh you know, is, is, is good. Uh, um, you know, as I said before, we'll, we'll check uh, rod bearings and things like that to make sure uh, you know, the car's, uh, uh, think the, you know, the engine's in good working order. Uh, so pretty much go through the, you know, e- each time we run the car, we go through all, all the systems on it to make sure they're, uh, you know, healthy and uh, good. You know, if we suspect something in the cylinders, we'll, uh, we'll leak the cylinders down or something like that or, uh, Occasionally, uh, yeah, if, we, if we need to, we'll pull the heads if we suspect something in there. But um, uh, you know, we pinched ring lands on occasion, and if we're able to pick that up by leaking the cylinders down, so we might have to shrink a piston or two. But if we're, if we're on our game, that doesn't happen, put it that way, the way we run the car. We 
you don't want to be you know, burning it down every run. Put it that way. All right. So and in, between, in between rounds, that's a that's a fire drill there because everybody has a has a has a uh, task. And when we come back from a from a run, you know, uh, everybody will put the car up in the air. They'll take the clutch covers off, strip the valve covers off of it. Uh, Go through the clutch, go through the valves, uh, check timing if we need to, uh, check check the fuel injection nozzle, <coughs> except for a fuel refuel it. We got to train all the oil out of it because it goes through 14 quarts of oil every pass. So we got to put new oil in it every pass. And, uh, so it's, you know, it takes us in 45 minutes to turn it around if we if we had to. But generally, we have more time. And, and then we got to pack the sheets. And, uh, uh, you know, those those little tasks. You know, the tire pressures and tighten all the bolts so everybody has a task in that sense and I'm very blessed to have a crew who is always way ahead of me on all those things uh, we made very few mistakes through the years so now what are some of your favorite tracks to go to oh boy uh, always loved Maple Grove uh, that's uh, you yeah, know that's just everything about it is, is terrific and uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed Cecil last year. Um, you know, our home track is uh, Keystone and New Alexandria, and those people are just really nice to us. Uh, we can go out there and uh, test the car whenever we want, and uh, you know, do some things in the turn. And they're just very nice to us out there. Um, the guy who's the uh, track manager welcomes us, and uh, the owner and the, uh, Tim Sankwitz, who's the uh, announcer out there. Uh, takes care of us when we go out there and uh, Jim does a lot of promotional stuff around the area for uh, Pittsburgh National Driveway and the like. He has car cruises and events at the car show and stuff so we try and uh, uh, help Jim out as much as we can too. And, uh, you know, really enjoy Keystone a lot too. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's our home and it's only 20 miles away so that's really nice. But Maple Grove's a, a terrific setting uh, out there. And I've run some real cow pastures in the past, you know, like down in uh, West Virginia and Fairmont, and a thousand foot with a sharp right hand turn at the end of the neck and everything. So, uh, fortunately, we you know, keep the anxiety factor down mostly in this uh, this part. We never put it off the track or anything. You know, if we came close to Keystone, we stuck a wheel off the end of the track, but that was uh, a long while ago. We've been fortunate. Now, do you only do quarter mile, or have you done eighth mile too? Yeah, we'll run. We've run uh, run eighth miles. We've done some uh, match races with uh, you know lined up against uh, you know blown out all funny cars and stuff like that. And, uh, actually, when we crashed the car, it went off four forty in the eighth at uh, <laughs> Bakersfield, and then spun through the lights and ran an eight eight eighty nine or eight ninety at eighty mile an hour or something on it. Spinning its way through the lights out of Bakersfield, so it was uh, I'm really not proud about that. But yeah, the pretty cars. I think it's capable of running a pretty, uh, pretty low four second uh, you know, in the eighth mile. It's easier to run the eight, that's for sure, because uh, you know, the, the, all the damage on these cars, engine wise, mechanically, is generally done in the uh, in the last quarter mile. That's that's where all the heat and uh, everything, all the engine RPM starts to take their toll. Uh, eight miles tend to breeze. Yeah, that's what a lot, lot of a uh, lot of drivers I've talked to say that they like the eighth mile because it saves on the wear and tear. Man. Well, I'm a quarter mile guy, and we never back uh, in the early seventies. Uh, there were a few eighth mile tracks around. I know we we ran uh, oh, a couple of them, in not uh, one in Ohio and one in uh, Mercer, Pennsylvania, were eighth mile tracks, but uh, the. Predominantly, they were mostly all quarter mile tracks. That's all we ran at, and with the exception of uh, uh, Eldora and Fairmont. They, they, they ran the faster cars there at 1,000 feet. So when I had my fuel car, we'd get on about 1,000 feet before we go down there. But uh, the other tracks were all quarter miles back then, and that's all we knew. Yeah, at the, at, the, at the eighth mile mark, that's when the car is just getting, uh, picking up speed. Pretty, pretty much so, you know, uh, and they're all done. We've got a, a uh, two-speed 
planetary transmission in ours, and uh, you know, we'll we'll be in high gear uh, right you know just before the eighth mile. We'll, we'll get in high gear, and then, and the the blown fuel motors make so much torque that uh, they'll kind of they'll drive it by by feel, but uh, he can get it off the line, and if the car is pulling hard, he'll let it in low gear for a little bit. But uh, if it's uh, doing something funny, he'll uh, you know he'll he'll, he'll shift it into high gear right away, and it's got so much torque that it uh, it overcomes that. The, the idea is we want to also keep the uh, uh, engine ahead of the clutch and not having to drag anything down on it, so it, uh, it you know, keeps, the, keeps the engine parts happy, put it that way. It doesn't slow the pump speed, the fuel pump uh, speed at all down, so we're, uh, uh, that's, that's how we try and run it. Now, do you bring the coupe to a lot of car shows? Um, we'll do a few of them. Um, uh, I've done the Pittsburgh World of Wheels. We've done some stuff for uh, Darwin Dahl in York, PA, and that's always been really fun uh, for the you know, old uh, York US 30 dragway. Uh, it was the, uh, kind of they called the Woodstock a drag race in the York US 30 at the airport there. It was the um, uh, birthplace of uh, funny cars and uh, the, the funny car movement, and certainly pro stock made it. Darwin Dahl, who was an NHRA Division One director, uh, was at uh, York Reunion. So we've been there a couple of times, and we've done uh, some things with them at the Beach Museum, motor racing. Um, as I said, uh, Jim Sankowitz uh, puts on a huge car cruise in July here in Pittsburgh, 1,200 cars or something like that, out in uh, uh, Bridgeville, PA, near the site of the old Pittsburgh National Dragway. And, uh, you know, we'll bring our car down there, and there's some other local cars, blown fuel, blown alcohol cars that will come in and uh, fire their cars up for the folks. And it's uh, really quite a lot of fun to do that because we get really, really big crowds of those down at that uh, Wednesday night car cruise. So it's kind of a fun event. And, we, you know, we'll, we'll do things here and there where it makes sense. Stat, they call them they're static shows. And, uh, when we do that, we'll uh, pull the axles out of the back of the car, which... Uh, can't go anywhere. It's got no axles in it, so we can do whatever we want with the car. Uh, as far as uh, firing it up. All right. So now, what, what what would you consider to be some of the, some of the milestones of your drag race career? Oh, geez. Uh, well, I, we we won a lot with our uh, a fuel car uh, way back. So that was. Uh, so we run those circuits things. That that was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, beating a guy with a twin engine uh, top gas car that was really kind of neat. And as I said, we I did, didn't focus on running NHRA stuff. And there's a lot of guys who are like that who are very uh, you know, terrific, uh, good racers and very smart people. But the NHRA takes a real commitment to run the uh, NHRA circuits, and uh, um, so you know you don't get the uh, Notoriety for you know winning a national event or something like that, but uh, you know the, the the stuff that we ran the various circuits. It was always uh, when we were running for blood on call back then. That was a lot of fun, and uh, you know the stuff that we did for uh, Gary Metters was really neat uh, when we ran uh, uh, English Town way back, and then uh, uh, we ran in Indianapolis and another Gary Metters good guys thing, and they brought in the old west coast to run us and that was really kind of a fun deal uh, that car had an engine in it that was ours goldie and i had that kng engine i had sold that to uh gary gary moreland who owned the mooning f car at the time and he had the engine in his car at indy and uh i had another engine in our coupe and uh they were just terrific guys it was a lot of fun to uh, see those guys and meet up with them out there and then, you know, uh, we do other, other stuff. Uh, Mike Lewis from Schumacher Racing asked us to come out and do their uh, charity event over the NHRA Nationals for uh, Riley Children's Hospital on, uh, for the 50th anniversary of Indy. And that was really neat because they probably had 25 fuel cars uh, lined up at Schumacher Racing. And to, to be a part of that was really a, kind of a special event. And they had an awful lot of folks uh, uh, at Schumacher Racing, which wasn't too far from the track at Indy. Um, all those things were, you know, really quite quite fun. We made an awful lot of good friends out of it. 
Now, Chad, after all these years of uh, doing this, what what keeps you so passionate about drag racing still? Ooh, well, I guess uh, um, I guess if you ever, if you ever did it, you build a car from scratch, and uh, uh, every time you start a uh, blown fuel car up, um, it's like the first time. It's just really the excitement never. It, it's it's just like like the very first time you did it. And as long as that, uh, as long as I still have that, I'll keep doing it. Uh, and of course we, we start ours on alcohol and then uh, we'll get some heat in the engine. We'll switch it over to, uh, nitromethane when we're warming up. And, uh, that's, that's, that's really neat just to watch all the, all the folks because it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you know, the car's loud enough on uh, alcohol, but when you, you switch it over to nitro, people just jump. And then when you hit crack the throttle on it, they really bail out. And then when we go down to the line, it's just a really neat uh, ritual when you get down to the starting line, uh, you know, getting uh, strapped in or strapping uh, the driver, Joe, into the car, and everybody has their, their jobs to do. You know, uh, you know uh, we'll start the car, and, uh, you know, Goldie will line the car up, and, uh, uh, you know, our, we've got our other guys, Mark and Andy, and Courtney, looking around to make sure that there's nothing uh, leaking out of the car and that everything is secure, and then Joe does his burnouts and the backing up. But as I said, it's the whole, the whole ritual for it is uh, it never gets old, put it that way. And it's, it's, um, I get, as long as I, as I still get the thrill out of that, I'll stay at it. Now, do you have any uh, pre-race rituals or superstitions at all? Now, Ted, we've reached the we reached the fun fun question portion of the interview. You ready for a few fun questions here now? Yeah, sure. Go okay. ahead. Now, you have any? Do you have any hobbies outside of drag racing? Uh, my grandkids. <laughs> now, and uh, you know, when uh, you know, I go to the gym a lot, and uh, it's kind of a leftover from the sports age, and uh, my kids work. Terrific uh, athletes in uh, high school, both of my my two sons, and uh, so I kind of gave up uh, doing cars and everything while they were uh, doing their uh, sporting events all through high school, and that was really gratifying to see them in, in college when I, my older son competed. So that that was that was the interest then. But now I'm fortunate enough that I've got uh, little grandkids, and they're all uh, all adorable, and uh, I get to have I get to do it all over again. But I can. Uh, pump them up with candy and then hand them off to their parents. So that's, that's pretty neat. <laughs> and I'm a, you know, I, 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 I do, uh, investments and stuff like that. So that's kind of a, uh, not necessarily a hobby, I guess, but, uh, somehow you got to pay for this insanity and that's, uh, that allows me to, uh, to do that, not sacrifice anything else. Unfortunately, my, uh, my wife is, uh, very supportive. Uh, she's not a car person, but, uh, she's, uh, just terrific with all the guys and the, in the summertime, we've got people coming in at our house all the time, and she, everybody's always got a clean bed and uh, meals at all hours of the night whenever we come back, and uh, uh, care packages when we hit the road. So I'm very, uh, very fortunate that Joy uh, you know, is, uh, takes care of us all like that too. You know, 
and we're both retired now. She's a retired teacher, and she just retired. It's her first year off of that, so um, makes it a little more leisurely now for us. So your your two sons never got into drag racing? No, not really. They, uh, you know, they would uh, come around to, uh, you know, uh, when we're doing stuff. But uh, they're both mechanical engineers, and uh, but uh, yeah, they had peripheral interest in it. But they were more into traditional sports, to put it that way, and uh, things of that nature. And, uh, and then, yeah, of course, they got their own families and uh, uh, raising their their families, so they didn't really have time. But they'll come to some of the car cruises and stuff we go to, and their grandkids like to. I'm all over the cars and everything, and if I needed a hand, I all I could do is call one of my boys and they'd come over and help me pick the supercharger off the engine or something of that nature. But, uh, it, we don't have to do that too often. You know, probably more than anything, I supply them with tools and uh, make sure their cars are uh, able to get repaired and on the road safely for them. So now, uh, how many how many grandkids? Have kids too, so. How many Sorry, Dave, how, how many grandkids do you have? Oh, geez, we've got six grandkids, and, uh, and we have another one coming in March. So, uh, our, our holidays are pretty wild, put it that way. No, they I, range from nine years old down to two, and then a new one coming along. So, uh, And we'll have them here. We've got a couple of them here this weekend. Uh, I think their parents needed a break, so they're giving us two of them for the weekend, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So that'll be a... Be a uh, a fun weekend with uh, irrational young grandchildren. <laughs> now, any of the grandkids show any show any interest in drag racing? Uh, well, the two boys for sure do. That's uh, the two younger boys. You know, they they just the older grandson, except the eight year old. He's a, a gamer. That's what his interest is. But the two two younger ones, uh, they seem to you know really really enjoy mechanical things, and they've got uh, you know got the one a little uh, car that he. Uh, take apart the front half of a car you can pull the engine apart on it and, uh, he loves tools and as and, you know as does the four-year-old so uh, we'll see how, how it goes when they get older and i know when when we've uh, had them in a couple of the static uh, starts that we've done uh, you know the, everybody takes them far away from the cars to protect their little ears and everything but they want to get closer and closer to it all the time so we'll see how that uh, pans out there you know as they get a little bit older you know, it'd be fun to take them out to the racetrack but uh um, we're always so busy there that uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to let them out of my sight or anything, as you can imagine. So, but uh, hopefully that'll come about in a few years. So you, you think you get any, get any of them in a junior dragster? Oh, way too early. <laughs> they got uh, the four-year-old had a go-kart. So I guess that's a start. <laughs> yeah, that's a start. Now, now the go kart though, you're not stealing any uh, lawn lawnmower engines, eh? <laughs> uh, I don't have to do that anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, don't have to have to. Have, that's part of the uh, part of the advantage of uh, getting a little bit older and uh, being able to afford things. Uh, yeah, I don't have to do that now. Yeah. Although I, I will, uh, I will steal gasoline from my lawnmower to, to you know, for those those vehicles up. All right, now throughout your uh, racing career, have you have you won any uh, trophies, plaques, stuff like that? Oh, geez, yeah. I, I, I don't pay much attention to that stuff, but uh, I was more interested in winning the money. You know, I collected pictures of the presidents predominantly, you know, uh, but, uh, and, and on, on dollar bills and things of that nature. But, um, yeah, the, the, the roadrunner, uh, the Penny roadrunner, uh, we were probably entered four or five shows with that uh, when I bought it back in 2011 uh, uh, and it did one first prize at every one of those things for uh, you know, the best nostalgic race car and muscle car or whatever and uh, that was kind of neat because uh, Chrysler found out the story about somebody buying a car back after 43 years and they had us uh, uh, brought us up to Detroit for the Woodward Dream Cruise as part of the uh, of that show and uh, at, uh, 13 Mile in Woodward, we were lined up on the corner, one of the uh, feature cars at their uh, their display, and that was really quite uh, quite fun. Uh, you know, you get uh, 40 to some thousand cruise cars and uh, over a million people uh, walking up and down uh, Woodward Avenue. It's 
12, 13 miles it goes for. But uh, that was a lot of fun to be part of the Chrysler show and have the car recognized for that. And then made a couple magazines, uh, Mopar Muscle Magazine, and did a couple features on uh, on the uh, on the Hemi Roadrunner. Uh, so that was neat. And then this coupe, we put it in. Uh, you know, it's been in a uh, three or four car shows that I entered it in, and, and each time it's it's got the best in class and uh, for it too, you know, we go, which is kind of neat because it's not a show car, it's a, you know, it's a car that's raced and, uh, you know, it has the, uh, has the wear and tear on it from being a race car. Um, looks great from three feet away, but you know, this, it's just got, you know, tire, uh, you know, rubber on the back fenders and underneath the, you know, wheel wells and stuff of that nature, you know, and uh, nitromethane has gotten to the fuel tank and other parts of it here and there, but it's always uh, it, it's done done great when, when we've taken it to the to the car show. So I got it. Yeah, I got a few trophies around, but I, I, I I'm not in it for that. It's really more in it for the for the friends and, and uh, things that I have. All right, now what what what's been the most embarrassing moment you had on the track? disappointment I think when we did uh, we had a magneto problem last year where the car didn't, didn't perform like it should and uh, uh, we actually had a loose fire on the burnout at uh, Dragway 42 and uh, you know, I had people come up and said you know in all the years we watched that car never seen it miss a beat and that was kind of uh, disheartening I guess because uh, we hadn't been able to hit that issue it just kind of came up and we weren't able to head it off in the past we figured it out uh, got that problem corrected and everything, but uh, that yeah, that was that was a disappointment. I guess not, that was not so much an embarrassment. Uh, it's, uh, uh, kind of neat. I do have a one one the one story as far as uh, and it doesn't really mean embarrassment, but it was kind of humorous when my buddy Mark Becker bought my uh, half of my fuel drive, so but he used to help us with it all the time. This back in seventy seventy one seventy one or seventy two, and we thought we'd let him drive the car then. Just as kind of a reward. Mark was a very good uh, uh, street racer and driver, we'll put it that way. So it wasn't like he knew the car inside and out. He worked on every aspect. But we were going to dumb the car up for him. And when he ran it, he said, nah, and we couldn't fool him. So we had a, you know, a typical setup on that fuel car, that late model heavy car, was uh, you know, straight nitromethane. We didn't cut it at all with alcohol. And uh, we even would tear the label off of the can and throw that in the tank. We put everything in it we could. That Mark knew how it was set up, but we, you know, we got him all strapped in the car, and he'd gotten uh, physical stuff like that that you had to have to, uh, to be legal to, uh, to even attempt to drive it. But uh, yeah, he did a burnout. He did kind of like a half-ass burnout. If you've ever done it in a drag, so you understand the whole car lifts up in there and just kind of stays there, and then all of a sudden it launches down the track, and it's a strange feeling because it grows so much as the tires grow. But he, he did a little burnout and backed the car up, staged it, and it was set up well, and he launched the car, and he was going great. All of a sudden, we put the engine, pulled the parachute and everything, and uh, it was just past half track. And we went, oh, my God, was, what happened? You're going like crazy. Said, All I could see was telephone poles and guardrails flying by me, and the start and finish line coming up. He said, I thought I was going through the lights. I pulled the parachute, and the forces put your head down as I looked up and I was only halfway down the track so that, that's kind of the sensation of when you drive a car that quick you know uh, that you get but uh, uh, in, in later years Mark got to be very good for it that way that was that was we never let him forget that it just all, all in good fun <laughs> man that is pretty funny so now um, what what would you consider to be the f- fondest memory of your uh, drag racing career? Oh, um, I, I think that you know the first couple of times I saw people who I was really impressed with, like Joniak and Kenny Montgomery, who had a uh, '65 Superstock car. They won something out of this International Dragway, and then of course the first time I saw blown fuel cars, and uh, uh, when I'd see the, the co- old Coca Cola Cavalcade of Stars when it used to come, in, those guys were on a uh, touring pros on a, on a another plateau, I guess. But uh, what I really, when I really think about it, is uh, is all the, the 
terrific friends that I've made uh, in the past and continue to make. That's really, if I have anything to remember by, that's, that's really uh, the real, the, to me, that's the real payoff for why we, why we do all this stuff. It's a tight-knit community. It really is. Now, if, if people want to find a schedule for the coop, what's the best way for them to find a schedule? Uh, between uh, Goldie, Corky, myself, we'll we'll post stuff on uh, on the Facebook. You know, we've got a lot of people that we all know between us, and there's a whole lot of uh, Facebook um, sites. There's a Fuel Altered site. There's a uh, Glory Days that we do. You know, do put a lot of stuff on glory days and uh, uh, nitro heads is another uh, really good one. So we'll post stuff on that. And uh, we've done that before. And we've had, uh, you know, when we go out to California, Joe Morrison will post it on his uh, website. And uh, it's just amazing how many folks that, uh, that we have uh, uh, come out there, especially to visit with us. And that's why it's, it's just really special when you talk to people online and then they actually come up and you get to meet them in person. It's Really, really quite fun, and we, you know, we Joe made up a couple of some T-shirts uh, a few years ago, and we uh, sold a bunch of them for his uh, foundation. He works with uh, you know, uh, Right to Breathe that supports uh, you know, research and uh, things for uh, the COPD, and so he, he he took those shirts out to the track and sold a bunch of them, and then I decided I would make up some shirts and. Uh, uh, we sold dozens of them out last year out at uh, Bakersfield when we go to the track and everything. So uh, um, it, it's just just kind of a nice uh, remembrance of the money and the things that we can do it uh, you know, for for folks to come by. And it's kind of cropping up all over the place. You see our shirts is kind of neat as well. You know, so got it, did the artwork on it with uh, it's just incredible work on it. But as I said, the uh, you know we'll we'll put the uh, events where we're going to be. They'll be well publicized in advance in addition to the tracks doing it too. We should be running to Beaver Springs this year in central Pennsylvania too. We got rained out there, so that's another one that uh, they're just really nice folks over there and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get to put on a good show at, uh, at Beaver Springs soon. Okay, now any final words or thank yous? No, I just, uh, it's been nice talking with you and, uh, congratulations on your, on your, uh, endeavors here. And I, I, I know some of the folks you're going to have on are, are really, uh, people that have great, great histories, uh, in the sports. I enjoy listening in and, uh, like I said, I you know, have nothing but, uh, appreciation and respect for the guys that help, uh, help me out with, uh, with our car. And, uh, they're above all, they're all all really good close friends and uh, like family members so uh, we look forward to meeting more folks out the track and, uh, and using up some more fuel awesome well I want to thank you very much for uh, for you taking the time to do an interview Ted well thanks for asking me Dave and uh, I'll be listening in on your uh, on uh, some of the folks that you, uh, you talk with in the future here well in about, in about 30 minutes Randy Randy Bradford will be on Good guy, really, really good guy. So try to tune in, tune in for that one. And anyone listening, Randy Bradford, about thirty minutes. Hopefully, everyone tunes in again. Outstanding. I'll be listening. All right. You have a great night, Ted, and thanks again. Thank you, Dave. Nice speaking with you. Have a good night. Bye bye.